It doesn't have to be in your service records because chances are you didn't go to the doctor, but it has to be in there now. Now let's dive right into the number one secret for veterans, right? To getting the benefits they've earned. So what, what is that number one secret? What's the first step on, on this process and this journey? Sure. The number one secret that is just not talked about enough is that VA disability claims come down to medical evidence. <laughs> and, and the problem here, Brett, is most veterans don't have enough medical evidence in their active duty service treatment records. And the reason is you probably never went to the doctor. Okay. You, you didn't want to be that guy or gal who looked weak. You didn't want to fall out of formation. You didn't want to be ostracized from your unit. Heaven forbid you became non-deployable. Okay. So we suffer alone in silence and we don't talk about the mental and physical conditions we're dealing with while we wear the uniform. And I'll tell you what happens then is when you transition out of the service, you then start to go away. I, I have all these conditions. I've got PTSD. I have migraine headaches. I've got sleep apnea. I've got you know, a painful uh, nerve condition called radiculopathy. I've got flat feet. And you go to apply for benefits and it all comes back denied. And the denial says something like, there's no evidence in your service treatment records of any complaints of sleep issues or any complaints of mental health conditions or blah, blah, blah. And, and that's really the first time, Brett, that a veteran becomes aware of, oh my gosh, I have a problem what happened? The VA didn't believe me. What do I need to do now? And that's where a company like ours comes in because we jump in there with the veteran. We say, look, the issue is you never went to the doctor on active duty. The solution is get your butt to the VA now and get a diagnosis from your primary care doctor or get a diagnosis from a private provider and start building the case of medical evidence. And then through personal statements, in things called nexus letters, the veteran can then connect their conditions back to their service, even if it's been years later and they've been denied multiple times. So that's that's the number one secret is, is making sure you have enough medical evidence in your record. It doesn't have to be in your service records because chances are you didn't go to the doctor, but it has to be in there now. And that's one of the services, Brett, that we provide in our coaching program is we're able to connect veterans to private medical professionals who can help with things like nexus letters to prove service connection of their disabilities, to document severity of symptoms um, so that veterans can finally get awarded the benefits they've earned for their service. Got it. So let me see pull that out, right? So the number one secret to VA disability um, or number one secret to, to getting the, the benefits you've earned as a veteran is uh, it's all going to come down to medical evidence and the evidence is going to determine whether or not you're going to get the benefits. And as a part of that, and I can imagine, right, you're in the military, you're there and you're building your, your mind, you're building your body, you're building your leadership, right? You're serving your country and you're with your, you're with your squad, right? And you don't want to walk out and be seen as the one who's, you know, the weakling or, or, or is dragging behind or whatever it might be, whatever the humility or the pride, the pride and the ego gets in the way. And we're not documenting that those who are serving are not documenting that. And they suffer alone in silence. And now post, you know, act, post active duty, all of these things are really kind of maybe coming to light. What is it about it that, I mean, it, it, do you feel like the PTSD and the sleep apnea and the flat feet and those, all those challenges, do they, is it like the body and the mind and the emotions finally relax after being in such a heightened state of adrenaline and, and intensity that they just start to notice it a little bit more? I mean, what percentage of it uh, is it, hey, I noticed it, I just ignored it. And what percentage of it is now that I'm actually relaxed and back to normal society, like, oh yeah, I'm not normal right now. Like I went through a lot of trauma. Like, can you kind of walk through us through that psychology there? It's probably some of both. Um, in my experience, though, Brett, uh, you know, we're all trained in the military culture, which is, you know, mission first, take care of everybody else except ourselves. And so I think when you're wearing the uniform, you're so worried about taking care of the mission and helping your brother and sister, you know, making sure nobody else gets left behind, that we don't think about our own, you know, mental and physical health. We just don't, you know, and a lot of us are in the military, too, and we're a bit younger. 
And so, you know, I think that factors in as well, where you take off the uniform 10, 15, 20 years go by these conditions that maybe were only uh, small problems while you wore the uniform are now significant problems that are causing major issues in you know, your work, your life and your social functioning. And so I think it's the military culture that, you know, we're just we don't want to be honest about our mental and physical conditions. And you know, my dad asked me a while back, he said, you know, what do you actually do at VA Claims Insider? What, you know, Brian, what what do you do? <laughs> I said, I give veterans permission to get the benefits they legally, morally, ethically, and medically deserve. And that's really important because that's part of the coaching process. Part of the, co- part of the reason why veterans need a coach is we're terrible at acknowledging or realizing our blind spots. And sometimes we're not willing to admit what's going on until somebody else gives us permission and starts drawing it out of us. And so that's where that inside out coaching process becomes so important. And, you know, Brett, I'm going to, I'm going to make a really bold statement and some people may disagree with me. Frankly, I don't care because I'm speaking from experience when I make the statement, every single veteran suffers and suffered trauma. Every single veteran is suffering from symptoms of mental health. It's, it's just the reality of what we see. And yet there's lots, even the VA doesn't want to acknowledge, you know, the VA statistics, they'll say, oh, only 25% of veterans have PTSD. Well, that's because they're only reporting the veterans who are seeking PTSD treatment at the VA. They're, they're not including the millions of veterans who have PTSD who don't get help. And they're not including those who are seeking private help because they don't trust the VA with their health care. So I truly believe uh, that the veteran suicide epidemic is a direct result of the fact that all veterans have mental health conditions. And until we get real about that, until we address it, I don't think we can stop suicide. I really don't. Wow, that's powerful and that's uh, amazing. 